Hi guys, it's Anne Marie. Welcome to my spring book haul. Now this was going to be kind of like my April or May book haul, but I was like, I kind of got books here and there over the last, I guess, two months, maybe a little bit of March as well. So I figured why not just have a spring book haul. It's not crazy. I think I got a great selection and I'm so excited to read these books. So you guys already heard me talk about this in, uh, I think the last video. I think it was my wrap up and my TBR. And I'm currently reading An Ember in the Ashes by Sabata here. I think I'm only on page 100 right now. You have two main characters, a male and a female, boy and a girl. One is a scholar, which is the lowest rung in society. And then you have a boy who's in the military academy. The boy wants to essentially go AWOL. And the girl whose brother was kidnapped by the rulers of this nation was taken captive. So she wants to save him, but in order for her to save him, she has to go in the same place that the boy is trying to escape. So I guess you can kind of already see what's gonna happen there. This may or may not be a series. Most people think it's going to be a series though, so we'll see. The next two books were sent to me by my friend Christina at Christina Reads YA and also The Lushables, which is her YouTube channel. The Cake House by Latifa Salam. Now this book sounded really fascinating to me. It's basically about a girl whose father kills himself after her mother leaves him. And then afterwards she goes to live with her mother and her wealthy, mysteriously wealthy stepfather in a pink house in the Hollywood Hills. Now when she's in this house, in the cake house she starts to see the ghost of her father and it's like he's telling her that whatever information was let out about his death things didn't happen the way that people believed them to be and again it kind of circles back to her very mysterious stepfather it's pretty short not very long sometimes short stories though just have the most impact every last promise by Kristen Halbrook this book is about a girl who goes to a party sees something something that makes her run away she leaves town and has to decide whether or not she wants to tell everyone what she saw the tagline is one boy is dead one boy is injured and it's all Kayla's fault. The Girl at Midnight by Melissa Gray. I also mentioned this in my last video, my April wrap up and May TBR. It's essentially about a girl who discovers that she may have magical or supernatural heritage and there's an entire world beneath New York City that no one knows about. One of the creatures or one of the magical peoples are humanoid but they have feathers. It sounds really beautiful and actually I read one excerpt uh, on her website. It was one single page that she took a photo of and the prose was so delicious I just knew I had to read this book and the premise sounds really good too. This is a book that my mother bought for me when my parents were here. It's called Narod Wihan Wiro Hanmari which translates to 101 Moments of Joy and Inspiration by Meredith Gatson. I actually didn't say her name. That wasn't when I read you the title. That was just the Korean title. Her name would be Meredith Gatson. Yeah, that would be her name. So this book has a lot of different sayings and it actually was written in English first and translated to the Korean. And I really love it. You know, there's some great stuff in here. It's First of all, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Beautifully illustrated as well. This is pretty great inspirational quotes such as set your course by the stars not by the lights of every passing ship omar bradley i like to read one inspirational quote from it every day another book mommy bought for me kelly link's get in trouble this is a collection of short stories most of them have been published before in different anthologies and things like that i've yet to read any of her work and i thought that maybe starting with this short story collection would be interesting according to the flap copy there are stories that have ouija boards astronauts pyramids evil twins bootleggers hurricanes the wizard of oz superheroes so yeah i'm really looking forward to reading get in trouble and actually i'm i'm still reading books of blood by clive barker if you guys haven't read any of clive barker's work he does like screen plays and a lot of his work has been adapted for film as well but he has some really gruesome stuff I don't usually read horror you know what I'll tell you guys about Clive Barker's book later it's called books of blood it's a short story collection I usually only read one story like every I don't know I meant to do it like every day read a different short story and that turned into every week and then it turned into just picking it up randomly but it's so good i don't mind taking my time it's crazy it's really gruesome it's not like light horror no some of the stuff is disgusting if you watched it you'd be like traumatized like that but his writing is exceptional so even if you just want to read someone who has great prose great storytelling able to pack a lot of characterization a lot of oh i just did the obama <laughs> a lot happens in just very few pages like so much happens and you really feel so close to the characters definitely check out books of blood i'm gonna just grab it for you because i've been talking about it this whole time one to three clive barker's books of blood very good not for the squeamish may give you nightmares i'm about halfway through again this is not part of my book haul just a book i'm sharing with you guys since we we're talking about short stories 
excellent excellent everything everything by nicola yoon now you guys already know how much i love this book because again in my april wrap-up i told you how much i adore it it's fantastic it comes out in september so definitely check it out i won't go too much into it now because i did tell you a lot about it in that video but it's amazing it's about a girl who can't go outside because anything can make her sick her immune system is completely non-existent and then everything changes one day when she meets a neighbor and this book is short it's quick it's fast-paced you can read it in one sitting highly 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 recommend and i picked this book up at y'all west actually when i met the author and got it signed too yay Magonia by Maria Devana Headley. I also picked this book up at Y'all West. This has been described as a cross between Neil Gaiman, Lainey Taylor, and John Green. Pretty awesome mashup. It's about a girl who has a mysterious illness. She can't breathe. Like, it's, she struggles for every breath. One day, she sees this ship in the sky, which her parents think is like a hallucination that's coming from her medication, only to find out that the ship is real. There's an entire world in the sky, and she somewhat belongs there. Then she goes there, she can breathe the air, she feels so healthy, so strong, but then she finds out that Magonia and our world are going to collide in a war. So she has to basically choose sides. I'm looking forward to it. People seem to love the prose. I read a little bit of it and I enjoyed it as well, so we shall see. I'm gonna stop saying we shall see after everything because obviously we will see. It's kind of, I don't know. It's like you wanna say something at the end. <laughs> we All Looked Up by Tommy Wallach, or is it Wallach? It's interesting, I've never seen that name before. In this book, Earth is going to be hit by an asteroid. All life will be decimated. It's going to be the end, basically, in two months. The book is not about the asteroid hitting or what leads up to the asteroid hitting and then what happens after that fact. It's more of a contemporary with a speculative twist or with a speculative element. So the asteroid is on its way in two months and we need to find out how these teenagers change their perception about themselves, about life, about their friends and family, about who they really are and what's really important when the end is coming. So this is not an end of the world, science fiction, action adventure, just so you can adjust your reader expectations. It is a contemporary with a speculative fiction twist, a sci-fi twist, but it's more about the people and what's going to happen when the thing happens. I don't even know if like at the end of the book it happens or not. I'm not sure, but whatever it is, what's more important is kind of like what everyone's going through and what they're feeling and thinking before the actual event happens. So I am so excited to be holding this in my hand. Last time I went to the UK, I was so disappointed. Well, not last time, but the time before that. I was so disappointed because I was like, I knew I should have bought um, Knots and Crosses. And I went to the bookstore before we left, like literally on the way to the airport because my husband knows I want to be by the bookstore, so he put us right across the street from the bookstore, like literally a hop, skip, and a jump from the bookstore. So I was able to pick up this book, Knots and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. It's the first in a trilogy, or maybe it's a four-part series, I'm not sure, but it's definitely at least three parts. It's about what I guess we could say is an alternative universe, where knots are white people and crosses are black people. Black people are first-class citizens, the white people are second-class citizens, and it's kind of like racism in reverse. And then, of course, you have one boy who is a knot, a girl who is a cross, and what happens when they fall in love. So it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet in this dystopian, racist world. And the interesting thing is, I'm not even sure if the racist world in her novel is significantly more racist than our own world or if the element of racism mirrors exactly the, I mean, there's so much racism in our own world. I don't really know if you'd have to like amp it up for story tension. So perhaps it is very much a mirror of our own. And then you just have that dystopian element. Although if you really think about it too, there are so many examples throughout history where we could look at our real world and say that that actually was dystopian. Mallory Blackman is critically acclaimed in the UK. She's one of the most highly respected not only YA writers but also just writers in general across the board so I'm really excited to get to this. Americana by, I feel like I'm going to mess up her name tremendously, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This book was named one of the 10 best books of the year by the New York Times Book Review and it's probably shortlisted for quite a few awards, I can't even remember, but I was so intrigued when I heard what it was about. I actually took a little peek into it because when I was in the UK, one of my publicists was reading this book. He had it on his desk and I started reading it. I was just like, ooh, I, I, I'm really into it. I wanted to get a paperback. There's some books that you really want in hardcover, but there's some books, there's something about paperbacks that are really cozy, I think. And because of what the book is about, 
I think that's what kind of made me feel like I would want this tactile experience. It's about two people who come from Nigeria. They leave Nigeria, male and female, and they go to America. One of them go gets into the United States, the other is refused entry and has to go to London. And we kind of follow their paths as far as where they're dealing with racism and immigration and all of those elements. I love the few pages of this that I read. They weren't in order, so I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm looking forward to digging into this. That was my spring book haul, aka what I picked up in April and May. Hope some of those sounded good to you. They sounded awesome to me. And you know what? I have to make sure I tell you guys this. When I do book hauls, they are not recommendations. These are just books that I'm interested in reading that caught my eye and I'm just letting you guys know that this is what I plan on reading in the future. Because I don't want you guys to be like, oh, I saw this in her book haul and it was absolutely terrible. Because I might be like, after I finish it, I might be like, oh my goodness, that was not hot. When I'm recommending something to you, you will definitely know it because I'll let you know that you should definitely read it. And also, it will be accompanied with a wrap up or something like that or I'll tell you like, you should definitely read this. But these book hauls, they're just things that have piqued my interest, which, I mean, there is a sort of a filter system in there because I don't just randomly pick up books and just buy everything. I find out how friends are feeling about it, people that I trust, I look at different reviews, I don't read them all because I don't like to know too much, but I try to get a good gauge on if I think that this book is going to be something that I love. I like to have books that I really want to read that I feel or suspect that I may want to keep and reread at a later time, but I want that as part of my collection in my library. 50% of the books that I read actually are from the library, and that's another post because I gotta definitely tell you guys to utilize your library's ebook collection. So yeah, I had to put a little asterisk there on that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and definitely leave in comments any of your thoughts about these books if you read any of the books. No spoilers please, no spoilers. Uh, and how you felt about them or any that you're planning on reading in the near future. Like the video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I'll see you guys later. Bye!